Hello everyone. This webcast is designed to give you a brief overview of the Archivematica project and a demonstration of it being used to preserve digital objects. My name is Evelyn McClellan and I'm a systems archivist on the project. This webcast coincides with the release of Archivematica 0.7 Alpha in February 2011. We'll start with some basic information. Archivematica is a comprehensive digital preservation system which integrates a suite of free and open source tools into a single user interface. Archivematica takes a microservices approach to digital preservation. In other words, it uses a set of independent but interoperable services to move a body of digital objects from ingest to access in compliance with the OAIS functional model. Users monitor and control the microservices via a web-based dashboard, which I'll be demonstrating in a few minutes. Archivematica uses METS, Premise, Dublin Core, and other best practice metadata standards, and it implements preservation plans based on analyses of the significant characteristics of file formats. Archivematica is free open source software, meaning that anyone can use it free of charge. <coughs> Development is led by Artifactual Systems, a company based in Vancouver, Canada. Seed funding was provided by UNESCO and continuing development is funded by Artifactual in collaboration with a number of implementers, including the City of Vancouver Archives, the International Monetary Fund, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the University of British Columbia Library. What you're seeing on your screen is the Archivematica Project's wiki. The address is www.archivematica.org. It gives a great deal of information about the project and the software, including details about Archivematica system architecture. It also includes links to the download page and to installation and user documentation. It's a good idea to have a look at some of the pages on the wiki before installing and using the software. I'm going to take us to the Archivematica dashboard now. The Archivematica dashboard is the primary interface the archivist uses to manage the process of moving a SIP through ingest, packaging it as an AIP, moving the AIP into archival storage, and uploading a DIP to the public access system. The dashboard lists SIPs in various stages of processing. The SIP with the bell icon next to it is waiting for the archivist to approve a microservice. The SIPs with check marks have been fully processed from ingest to access. The SIP with an X next to it has had a microservice fail. And the SIP with the stop button has had its processing terminated by the archivist. To view a SIP in more detail, hover the cursor over it. The SIP will be highlighted and two menus will appear, microservices and remove. Clicking remove will remove the SIP from the dashboard but not from the Archivematica file system or from archival storage. Clicking microservices will open up a list of microservices completed or waiting for approval, as well as more menu options. Clicking tasks will open a list of tasks completed as part of the microservice. If all or part of the microservice fails, the list will include error messages. Clicking Browse will open up the SIP contents in the web browser. The user can view folders and files but can't edit any of the content or delete any of the contents at this point. Clicking Approve will move the SIP into the next stage of processing. Clicking Reject will stop processing and move the SIP into the rejected folder into the file browser. Hovering your cursor over the blue question mark next to the microservice name will open up a help text box explaining the current task. Clicking the microservices menu again will close up the list of microservices. The dashboard is used in conjunction with the file browser. To start processing a SIP, The user moves the SIP into the folder Receive SIP. The SIP can be opened, viewed, and modified at various processing stages. A microservice failure will send the SIP to a specified folder, 
failed or failed normalization. And rejecting the SIP in the dashboard will drop the SIP into the rejected folder. We're going to process the SIP now. To begin, we copy and paste the SIP into Receive SIP. and we rename the SIP to start the processing. Once it's been placed in Receive SIP and renamed, it will appear in the dashboard with a bell icon next to it to indicate that there's a microservice that's waiting for approval. We can see some of the microservices that have been completed. A complete backup of the SIP has been created and placed in a folder in the file browser. SIP compliance has been verified. This means that Archivematica has checked that the SIP has certain specified folders required for processing. Now it's very easy to format any folder to make it acceptable for processing in Archivematica using our pre-ingest scripts. Assigned file UUIDs and checksums means that each file in the SIP has been signed a universal unique identifier and a checksum. Verify metadata checksums means that checksums that arrived with the SIP were checked and verified. Create DC means that a Dublin Core XML template was created and added to the SIP. We can take a look at the SIP in the file browser. It's been placed in a praise SIP for submission. There are our objects. And here is metadata. This includes the Dublin Core XML file, which was actually included in this SIP prior to ingest. This is just a blank template for adding Dublin Core metadata. There has been some metadata that has been added to this, including a title, and the name of the font to which this SIP will belong when it's been processed. When we upload the DIP to the access system, it will be added to the Arbutus Studio phone. Going back to the dashboard, we're going to approve this for further processing. At this point, the SIP is placed in quarantine. Now there's a preset period of quarantine in Archive Matica, but we're just going to move the SIP through quickly for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to click approve. Now Archivematica has sanitized file and directory names. That simply means that any prohibited characters and file names and folder names have been removed. Archivematica has also extracted packages, which means that if a SIP arrived with zipped folders or other packaged files, the contents of these files were extracted. Now Archivematica is scanning for viruses. If there is a virus, SIP processing will stop and the SIP will be moved to a special folder. Now Archivematica is characterizing and extracting metadata. This is the FITS tool that's been invoked to identify file formats and validate the formats against external specifications. It also extracts technical metadata, which will be added to the premise file in the AIP.